Hi, good day everyone! This is Sir Jet and welcome to another episode of the History Lectures. Today, our lesson is Magellan's Voyage Around the World. This lesson is very interesting and intriguing. This may sound very, very uh, familiar to you because since grade 1, you have been studying this guy Magellan. But today, in college history, you will find a lot of new things about him and his journey and about our country at the time of the first contact with the Spaniards. Alright? So, this lesson will be based on a primary document, the diary of this guy, Antonio Pigafetta. He is Magellan's friend. He was there in the voyage with Magellan. He is the chronicler. He is the one who wrote all the observations that we will, uh, we will read. Oh, by the way, by this time, you should have read the PDF file that I have uploaded on Blackboard. You should have done your advanced readings because this is quite a very very long primary document now the the one i uploaded on blackboard is just the excerpt okay or excerpts of the real document because pigafetta's writings his diary is actually more than a thousand pages long yes he wrote every day for the three years of their voyage and you can just imagine how many pages his uh, book okay the original document so I don't want uh, you to read all of those I just uh, got the part that uh, they were in the Philippines and that's the one that we will focus on so I hope you have read that document okay now let's talk about um, uh, Pigafetta. Uh, he's actually a he's he's not a Spaniard. He is an Italian. Okay? He's an adventurer, and he just uh, asked Magellan if he can join the trip. And Magellan said, "Okay, go ahead. Uh, come with us." All right. Now, how about Magellan? What's the background about this guy? He is said to be the discoverer of the Philippines in the Pangkayong Pananaw. In their perspective, in the European perspective, they are the ones who discovered the Philippines. But as I have mentioned in our past lesson, before Magellan, the Malayans were already here. So it's the Malayans who discovered the Philippines. Now, Magellan is not a Spaniard. He is actually a Portuguese. Okay, so Portugal is a little country beside Spain. Okay, so he is actually at first an enemy of Spain. But he defected. He changed teams. And so he is now with uh, the uh, Portuguese, uh, with the Spaniard king. Okay. The one who funded his uh, trip around the world. He had a disagreement with the Portuguese king. So he changed teams. He went to the rival country, Spain. And so he's now working for the king of Spain. Now in those times, there was a big, big, big rivalry between Spain and Portugal. These two are the world powers. Okay. And uh, so they had this... Uh, like a big uh, contest or uh, who has the bragging rights who's the better kingdom in exploring the world in getting the riches of the world in conquering the uh, unknown places of the world that was in the early 1500s when uh, Spain and Portugal had that rivalry on who controlled the world who controls the, the, the seas in particular the oceans so it's a naval uh, rivalry. Now, 
don't you know that Magellan was already here in Southeast Asia 10 years before the discovery of the Philippines in 1521 1511 he was already in Malacca and Malacca is over here in present-day Malaysia there's a narrow uh, bad body of water here called the Malacca Strait and over here, there's a dot there, the city of Malacca near uh, present-day Kuala Lumpur, which is a spice market. Okay, so imagine it's one of the finest spice palenque in the world. And Magellan was there in 1511 to conquer it. So he was actually shopping there for the Portuguese, okay? shopping uh, for spices and then he thought of uh, the idea of uh, instead of uh, shopping here I'll just get this for the Portuguese king and so he conquered the Palenque and named it part of the Portuguese Empire and that was 1511 now he doesn't know yet that there is an, an archipelago over here Okay. So the Europeans, Magellan and others, came from this direction. They went to Malacca to do their uh, shopping for spices. But they don't know that beyond Malacca, there are many more islands that have better spices. And not just spices, but also gold. Okay, And uh, one of those... Uh, Islands is called the uh, Molucas Islands over here in southern Philippines in uh, present-day Indonesia so they just heard stories about um, Malacca but they have no idea about the Philippines all they know is that they are shopping here in the giant spice palenque of Malacca and so they got this for the Portuguese king and so the Portuguese control the spice market. Okay? So it's just around the corner. He doesn't know that the Philippines, just a little sailing, he would be in the Philippines. So what happened after he conquered Malacca? Let's uh, introduce you to another character in the uh, voyage of Magellan. Uh, in he is this guy is the interpreter of Magellan during his trip here to the Philippines now he, where did he get the interpreter he got it in Malacca because aside from uh, as, aside from uh, a spice market Malacca is also a slave market so Magellan took home to Europe a slave boy a Malayan brown-skinned okay uh, made him his uh, alalay brought him to Europe and named him Enrique and in uh, Europe he taught him how to speak Portuguese and Spanish so this guy grew up in Europe okay a brown-skinned boy in his teens Probably when uh, uh, he, Magellan embarked on his voyage, uh, that was around almost 10 years after he got Enrique from Malacca. That was since 1519. And he was very handy in the, in the expedition because Enrique could speak uh, the language of the people whom Magellan met here in the Philippines. Now, how did that happen? That uh, he can understand uh, the language of uh, Raha Humabon, Lapu-Lapu, and all the natives. Because some historians theorize that Enrique must be from the Visayas, not really from Malacca. He was taken from the Visayas to Malacca as a commodity. So in the old times, uh, the slave trade is legal and so some merchants would get slaves and bring them to the market 
and the uh, Malacca is the big slave market and they get uh, their uh, slaves from all over and one favorite place that they get slaves is from the Visayas okay? according to some historical uh, documents that uh, Visayas is the what the Visayan villages were uh, raided by uh, some Moro people from Mindanao and uh, they get slaves out of the raids and maybe okay just maybe but a big big chance that uh, a product of those Visayan raids is Enrique who found his way to Malacca and Magellan bought him or got him from Malacca taught him Spanish and Portuguese and when they arrived here in the Philippines together okay Magellan and uh, Enrique Enrique could understand and interpret the language of the Visayans whom Magellan met makes sense okay makes sense but we are not 100% sure but there is a big chance that he is a Visayan a Filipino now Enrique de Malacca is said to be also the first guy or the first man okay to circle the world not Magellan because Magellan died in the uh, Battle of Mactan and not Elcano the uh, successor of Magellan in leading the expedition back to Spain when Elcano and uh, Pigafetta arrived in Spain Okay. they were credited as the first uh, batch of people to circle the world but many did not uh, notice or they overlooked that before Elcano there was this guy a Malayan probably a Filipino who's, who made a complete circle of the world ahead of these Spaniards now how did that happen? I will show you a very very simple illustration on how um, Enrique was the first one to circle the world. So I have here the globe, okay, and um, this is the Philippines, okay. Can you see it, okay? And that's supposed to be where uh, El, um, Enrique okay, was born. And so he found his way in Malacca, over here, okay, in the slave market. Now I will, uh, I will uh, put this uh, string okay, in the Philippines to... Uh, to indicate that uh, Enrique started his journey around the world from the Philippines where uh, he, he was uh, taken as a slave and then he reached Malacca that's where he met Magellan and they went to Europe okay, where he studied okay, here in Europe in Spain Okay, and then uh, Magellan defected from um, Portugal to Spain and uh, started the expedition around the world with Pigafetta, with uh, Elcano. So this blue string would be the starting point. Okay, of the Ma of Magellan's journey. Okay, the blue string is Magellan, uh, Elcano, Pigafetta, and Enrique riding the ship and circling the world. So now they are together, the blue and the green okay, string, and they cross the world. And they reach the Philippines. Okay, by the time they reached the Philippines, what do you notice? 
the blue string is just halfway around the world. Okay? Who is the blue string? El Cano. Okay? Picafeta and the Spaniards. Just halfway around the world. From Spain to the Philippines, just half of the world. The blue string wrapped around the world. Half only. Okay? Halfway. But look at the yellow string. It's now a complete circle. By the time they arrived here in the Philippines, yes, correct. Enrique de Malaca has completed the circling of the world. Now, Magellan died in the Battle of Mactan, but Elcano continued the trip. Okay? And by the time that uh, Elcano reached Spain, okay, he made a full circle, but this guy Enrique de Malaca circled the world ahead of him. Okay? So, who is the great one? Okay, who's the first guy who circled the world? It's not a Spaniard, but it is a Filipino or a Malayan. We're not sure if he's Filipino, but we are sure he is Malayan, brown skin. The first man to circle the world, Enrique de Malaga. Remember that. Okay, so let's continue. All right, there we go. I'm giving you the context, okay, of uh, the journey, and later on we will have another seat work. So let's talk about the journey. Magellan's uh, mission for Spain, it began in 1519, is to discover a trade route going to the Moluccas, the Spice Islands, which is over here. I pointed that a while ago. Uh, it's in south of uh, Mindanao, present-day Indonesia, the color blue area here. That's where you find the Moluccas. Because the existing trade route was controlled by the Portuguese. This is uh, Malacca, okay? And uh, Spain and Portugal is somewhere here. Okay, we don't have enough space, so I just placed it here. And Portugal goes to Malacca going this way, okay? And Spain, if they want to get spices, go shopping also to get spices in Malacca, must go this way, but the Portuguese blocked this highway. They call it the Portuguese highway. Only Portuguese people can pass through this way, going to Malacca. Okay? You want to go to uh, the Moluccas, you have to go this way also, but the Portuguese patrols this ocean and nobody passes here. They monopolized this ocean. It's Portuguese owned. So the, mi the mission of um, Magellan is uh, to find a way going here by not passing through this way but he has to pass through this way around the TV and they will appear on here here on the other side and reach the Molucas they have to pass through this ocean not this ocean so that is the mission of Magellan now nobody has tried that before nobody has sailed this ocean before Magellan no European yet and so it's the first time that uh, he will explore this side of the world, okay? And uh, he believes that there is a connection. If he sails this way, he will go around the world and pop up on this side and reach the Moluccas Islands, okay? That is his plan. So he embarked in 1519 with five ships and inside the five ships were 270 men. And among the 270 were Juan Sebastian Elcano, who later became the head of the expedition after Magellan's death, and then Antonio Pigafetta, the Italian adventurer who served as his chronicler. He uh, took down notes every day to really uh, uh, document the whole trip. And of course, Enrique de Malaca, who was the interpreter of the group. All right. 
Now, it was a very, very long trip and uh, more than a thousand pages of Pigafetta's writing, but I will just summarize uh, the events that happened before they reached the Philippines. So they spent a lot of time in South America actually, sailing a aimlessly because it's uh, uh, their first time to really sail in that part of the world. And they're trying to discover a passageway to the Moluccas. Okay, so because uh, they spent so much time, more than a year or almost a year, in, uh, in South America, trying to find the, the Pacific Ocean, some of the men staged a mutiny. They, th they, they got angry at Magellan and said, uh, this guy is crazy, let's go home. And uh, Magellan said, uh, nobody should go home, everybody will continue with me in this trip. And so those who were uh, disobedient to Magellan, he beheaded them. Wow, this guy is really uh, tough. Okay? This guy is a fierce man. This guy Magellan. And the other mutineers, he left them in South America. Okay? He marooned them. Uh, brought them down to the beach and then left them there to, to, uh, to die. And so everybody was afraid of Magellan after that mutiny. And everybody uh, really obeyed him. Every command of his. Okay? So this is South America. This is uh, the aimless uh, journey. This segment trying to look for a little space for them to enter the big ocean called the Pacific. And they found a little opening over here. And it's now called the Strait of Magellan. Okay? So, a, a tiny passageway. Narrow for a ship to enter. But uh, if you continue it, you will find the big opening. And so Magellan, okay, was able to pass through the Strait of Magellan with only three ships one sh one was a b one ship abandoned magellan tried to go back to spain and one was shipwrecked and so the three remaining ships one two three out of the original five was able to enter this ocean and cross it going to this part of the world and uh, that's around 1520 okay and so the strait of magellan was named after the discoverer magellan and it led to an ocean and the ocean okay is named mar pacifico in spanish it means pacific ocean by the way in spanish the c when followed by an i the c makes a th sound so you don't say mar pacifico but you say mar pacifico okay th pacifico or bonifacio Okay. Marcelo. Okay, that's how you speak Spanish. And so this big ocean was uh, flat, not too big waves, no storms, very peaceful. And so Magellan called it the peaceful ocean. Okay, Pacific Ocean. And uh, it's funny that Magellan crossed it without encountering a single storm. When in fact... Uh, it's actually the breeding ground of typhoons. We all know that 20 plus typhoons cross the Philippines every year and those typhoons come from the Pacific Ocean crossing our country. But when Magellan crossed it, it's like a chamba. No storm, zero when he crossed it. So he named it Pacific Ocean. Um, probably uh, he's wrong in uh, giving it that name. Anyway, so after the long trip across that ocean, the first island that he uh, found was Guam. Okay. Actually, he missed all the islands in the Pacific. There are many islands there, but that's another funny thing. Aside, aside from not encountering a single storm, he didn't see a single island. And, and so, uh, when they reached the uh, uh, when they reached Guam, many of them died already in the crossing of the Pacific died of hunger and disease and um, 
uh, stories of Pigafetta wrote that they what did they eat during that uh, long trip across the Pacific there is no st stopover to uh, to replenish their food their Spanish sardines ran out okay no no more food on board they ate their boots their boots because boots are made of leather and leather is a cow skin and so they they cooked it huh? can you imagine uh, adobong uh, adobong boots adobong uh, uh, sinigang na boots <laughs> i wonder uh, how that tasted so that's what they ate and they also ate rats that they found on board and sawdust so they they saw pieces of uh, wood from uh, parts of the ship and then they ate those sawdust and many of them died of hunger so when they reached Guam they were really really uh, happy and uh, Magellan also is the discoverer of Guam and uh, this is the monument of the landing site of Magellan in the island of Guam Guam is over here okay uh, east of the Philippines so before you reach the Philippines you pass through Guam and Magellan found Guam and then he sailed on from Guam he didn't had a uh, he didn't have a nice experience in Guam he actually named it uh, Ladrones which means island of thieves because uh, the natives of Guam stole many of their items and from Guam they sailed on to the Philippines and the rest is history because that's where Magellan found his death in the battle of Mactan okay, so a lot of uh, natives led by Lapu Lapu ganged up on Magellan you know the story but I want you to read the story from the original document the PDF file I have posted on blackboard okay because uh, the stories you hear from your grade 1 teachers are just uh, verbal but I want you to read the original okay now after the battle of Mactan I'll just give you a little uh, summary of, uh, uh, of, of the end of uh, the uh, or the second half of the voyage of Magellan after reaching the Philippines and uh, dying in the battle of Mactan the, um, the men of Magellan that failed to retrieve his body from the battle and uh, they sailed on okay with the three ships but actually they are just too few many of them died already so the remaining Spaniards couldn't uh, drive three ships so they just uh, pulled themselves together in two ships and they drove the two ships back home or tried to drive the two ships back home the third ship they burned it okay they, uh, they abandoned it and they burned it somewhere near Cebu so that the natives could not use it okay and uh, imagine the natives uh, using the galleons no? and then they, they can uh, travel so far so uh, they don't want that to happen okay and so the Spaniards burned that third ship and uh, the Spaniards tried to go back to Spain they did return to Spain 1522 but with only one ship okay they lost uh, the second ship and the original uh, 270 men what remained only 22 okay 22 reached Spain but not all of them are actually from the original 270 because they the 22 included 18 Europeans and four Malayans that they picked up along the way so they would uh, train those four Malayans to learn the Spanish language because one day they would go back to the Philippines as interpreters so the Spaniards were smart okay? they uh, kidnapped or uh, they brought home to Spain some Malayans and El Del Cano others spell his name Del Cano others spell it El Cano and Pigafetta were among them
All right. In our next video, we will discuss part two. Okay. This is part one. Next meeting will be part two of Magellan's voyage around the world. I'll see you around.